to cancel. Well, here again, I think we're getting into too much detail. Oh, I, think, okay. I think that the But the I just want to clarify well, that. Let me, let me finish, yeah. please. I, I, I think that we, we need to take the first step of, of uh, authorizing the start of the committee, and, and but I think that as far as trying to define tonight, these are the processes we want you to follow, one, two, three, four. I think you've got it very nicely laid out there that you have some options to take a look at, that, and if they fit uh, with that type of thing, fine. And, and there's there's no no reason why uh, you and the committee couldn't come back and, and ask for some modifications later on if the charter is, is, is too binding or not, uh, not uh, clear enough. I'll, I'll stop with my comments on that. I just have a couple of things. Um, Following up on what um, uh, Mr. Worthing said, that there's no there there, I, I think many of you have heard me say that what we want to do with creating a town center, a community center, is to create the heart of Atherton, where, uh, where Atherton residents can go because with the police department, with the post office, with the town administration uh, facilities, the building department, public works, uh, the library, in the, the one area here, you do create the heart of Atherton because that's what we're about. We're, you know, we come for our building permit, we come for our police uh, 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 alarms, and we give them our keys, and we check in on things, and we come to the post office. So that, I um, wholeheartedly agree that this is an objective, this is a goal. Oh, I have a couple questions I wanted to ask city manager. Um, regarding uh, e uh, proposing to advertise for the committee membership, um, in, I assume you were going to talk about the almanac or uh, on the email lists uh, that are available in town, the Aristocrats or the Atherton's, and then I know that the town has a list of you know a thousand people or so email lists. Uh, and then who's going to write the ad? What will it say? If we advertise tomorrow, I mean, how, how are we going to? advertise it, who will write that. So that's a detail I know that. Um, and I do agree that we should extend that March 5th date. It seems uh, just like it's right around the corner, especially if we're not going to be um, making the decisions until March uh, 20th. Um, so um, I think our other council members have uh, answered uh, ask some of the questions. So I'd like to open it up to the public for input at this point on this. Yes, sir. It's me, Roger Schwab, Atherton Uh By background, I've spent 38 years in construction, building large projects, significantly larger than what we're talking about here. And I can't encourage you more to figure out the funding before you get started. It's awfully <laughs> difficult to give an architect direction on what you want them to design and build unless you know how much money you have to spend. And I think uh, Mr. Whitmer was right on point with that. I would also encourage you to look at a master plan that does go in two directions, where they're all together or where they are separate with the library separate. Uh, we know the library has funding available to it. And the reason I bring that up is there's a, there is a seismic report on the town's website talking about the condition of the library. I think it ought to be re-reviewed to determine whether we're comfortable with where we sit with as that library building sits right now. That's my point. Thank you very much. Anyone else? Uh, John Worthing again. Yes. Uh, 98 Dickwood. Um, have we done a needs assessment? Has everybody, have all the departments kind of said this is what we'd love to have and this is what we like to have and this is what we can barely live with. If I could respond to that, um, yes, uh, it's been done two or three times now over the last uh, three, four years. First, the Blue Ribbon Task Force, of uh, which um, <coughs> members, uh, council, um, council member Dobby was on and uh, um, Mr. Uh, Grindley, uh, who's not here, uh, he was going to be here today. Um, and they, uh, members of uh, uh, the public, I think, John Sanders was on it, so that they did um, a complete needs assessment, and it was given to the council in a report in uh, 2009. Then it was turned over to the Town Center Task Force, which re-vetted all of the needs uh, uh, of the departments 
and then presented a report to council in 2010. And then it was re-vetted again just last year by the preferred architect uh, that was chosen and met with each department head uh, in a meeting and did a project scope. So they, this architect that was the preferred architect uh, who did the uh, conceptual design has a very good idea of what the needs are, especially even in light of the outsourcing and the um, consultants that we have, um, you know, so, but it's always a moving target. And so the direction for the uh, town center portion was that it would be uh, open plan, flex space, very, you know, malleable for the growth and, and not a lot of hard offices. So. Okay. My concern um, goes to, and I'll, I'll give you an example, is the uh, Marriott Hotel, which is just in the south side of Market in San Francisco on about 4th Street. And the architectural people have said for years it looks like it was built by a committee ah. because it's got five, six, seven different mediums on the outside of it. And I guess that would be my concern. Is we, you know, and I'm not sure where or who would be the nucleus of uh, coming up with a plan and an architectural theme, um, whether we just follow the existing mm -hmm. architecture that's already on the, uh, the train station and make that larger, or is it something going to be something modern? When I was involved in the, uh, on the committee of Sharon Heights to rebuild our clubhouse, you know, it was very critical that we came up with something that pleased a lot of different eclectic tastes. And it's a very, very difficult, and so that's a very difficult assignment for a committee to come up with something that, that's clean and simple and, 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 and works. You know that building, right? <laughs> Valerie Gardner, Tom um, McLean. So I just want to start by saying thank you for getting this started and for doing, coming up with a, a great idea that will expedite and move this along. I think we're all ready for this project to start. Um, I also want to say I am a little bit confused about an aspect which I think is my misunderstanding. Um, I agree with what Jerry Carlson said that the resident advisory committee should be facilitating resident engagement so that it's not the staff going to the committee and asking them for their opinions but actually the committee going to the community to collect information and whether that's done by the committee itself or by ad hoc groups focusing on things. I think we need to clarify how that community engagement piece will work. But um, the piece that I feel, I mean, I, I would agree with what Bill said about the funding, except that we have to decide what we're putting the cart before the horse or the horse before the cart. You can't get architects working on spaces without an idea of budget, but you can't get what the spaces are until the community has defined what the functions are. So. I do think we need to wait on worrying about the funding to get some of that community input because, you know, theoretically we could say we want a library that just has wireless hotspots and not a big building, but that's an extreme. We might say we want a very traditional library with lots of reading space and cozy nooks and corners and couches. So I think the community needs to decide what it wants then we should be getting architects involved, and then we should be worrying about what kind of funding we need. So that's my comment. And I'd like clarity on the distinctions between what architects will do in a master planning phase and what the community is doing to envision what they want. Thank you. I wrote it on PD2. So I think it would be really helpful if we just defined what we're talking about as a master plan. Because um, a master plan of how we're going to use our site, our limited real estate, is how I see it, and maybe that's wrong. It's more of a master plan of how the uh, various civic buildings will be sited 
in this limited real estate location that we have here. And in doing that, it mitigates traffic, noise, high-speed rail noise, uh, accentuating our uh, heritage that we have here in this location, uh, maybe redirecting uh, uh, streets, but just looking at the site plan in a master planning uh, scenario. Now, that's my vision of a master plan. If everybody, anybody and everybody else has a different one, please let me know. <laughs> but Anybody? I would just like to emphasize that nowhere here have we talked about high-speed rail, and uh, hopefully we, none of us hope that high-speed rail comes through here, but nevertheless, if it does, it's going to be years of total construction and really a disaster as far as we're concerned. But I think that in the planning process, we have to assume that it may happen, and therefore whatever we do, uh, I think we, at least one alternative has to be if high speed rail comes through, um, you know, what will our master plan look like? Because I, I think, despite the fact that none of us want it, several other people, including Jerry Brown and uh, all the unions and a lot of other people with a lot of money and a lot of heft, certainly are pushing it like crazy. Uh, and so, you know, we, we could be in the middle of a real mess, so I think whatever master plan we come up with has to take that into account as one of the possibilities. So, so uh, on your master plan, yes, okay. that's okay, I'll speak loud. Can everybody hear? Okay. Okay, so on the master plan input based on, on your question, you know, I, I agree with what you said uh, with regards to we have limited space, we need to figure out what we what we want to put where we also need to look at you know the traffic flows understand really what's going to be coming in how much traffic there will be it's not an EIR of course but there, we have to make sure that there is traffic flows to support the services that are going to be delivered at each of those and I think that that's really why when we first started talking about a master plan um, you know, Mike had indicated that uh, he thought it would take some Obviously, it takes community involvement. It does take a number of months, and you bring in professionals who do these things, and it, and it has a certain cost to it. There are the, the quick and dirty ones, like I've seen Phil's, and it's, oh, it's, it generates... Quick and dirty? <laughs> well, you know, I mean, back of the made it that way, you know, the back of the envelope. I didn't say that, because it, it's not the back of an envelope. It's actually it's nicely laid envelope. out. But, but, you know... And, and so really it's, it's whatever the flavor of the day is, it's probably somewhere in between because we've got limited space here, but we do need to make sure, and I think that, you know, I'll reemphasize the point that I made earlier, I think that understanding really how we're going to use the space, perhaps with adding in some things that Valerie pointed up, you get the community input first and then and then factor that into the, the master plan and then move forward, I think is really the, the appropriate thing. And I, I would recommend, really, master plan should be the first thing we, you know, absolutely the first thing that this committee does, and then we can add to the charter as we move forward. I'm not trying to slow the process down, but I am trying to make sure that we're not throwing the money out to bed, so to speak. So, so um, that's my comment on the master plan. Any more public comments, please? Uh, just let let uh, this lady. This is our Valentine girl. Oh, that's Mardi so Gras Valentine Day. <laughs> we know how um, to have fun, don't we? Um, a lot of things. I uh, I think the master plan is definitely the first step, and I think the master plan needs direction from the community to start with, and I think from what I understand from talking to a few very successful developers. They need you need to set them up right so you're not you don't you're not giving the master planning people an open checkbook and you're going to get a better outcome. So I also think my hope is that the master plan will come up with at least two scenarios, one all together and one with a library expanded or you know do, doing something with streets closing and, and working with two separate places. But I think we need to leave that to professionals. Mm -hmm. I would advise that there are plenty of very good, excellent master planning firms and maybe we should find one of them and start with that. Um, I have some good news. 
and it has to do. I'm gonna. I would support uh, Council Member Carlson's um, uh, asking for the finance leg of this to be separate. I think that needs to be separate. There's a lot that goes on there that does not need to be discussed in public. Um, at this point, uh, right before Christmas, a very generous resident has uh, donated over $20,000 to be used um, in support of uh, looking into the information specific to a police department building. And um, I think the Atherton Police Foundation that has the Capital Improvements Fund is supporting the chief uh, to go out and get the information with a he and George need to um, come up with square footage, uh, what would be included in that space, so that that piece plus the library piece and $1.8 million from the town <coughs> gives us a, a starting point to go to the community and say, master plan is coming, here's what this part's going to cost, that part is funded, this part is started, and I have someone who's ready to, to host the first luncheon for 20 people that we're going to be asking for major donors, major money from. Uh, we don't know what the answer to that will be from those people. They'll be asking more questions, and my hope is that, you know, maybe by the summer we'll have a real kickoff. We'll have money. So I would not, um, I think we can't, it, it, the problem with this process up until now has been all the legs are working in different directions and we're not able to get a start and the community is saying, what's your problem? You're not getting anything done. We really need to show this community that, we're, that the council is serious, the residents are serious, and we are going to get this project in all forms completed. Yes. Thank so, you. thank you. Thank you. Council Member Carlson has something to say, and then we'll let Rose. Oh, go, go ahead. Uh, no? I'm sorry, okay. you were. Rose, good. would you like to? Yeah. Yes. Uh, just a simple question. Oh, oh I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah. You know, okay. uh, would you let someone sure. else, and she's already spoken a couple of times. Uh, we'll, we'll get back to you, but. Um, thank you. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Take your time. Okay. I, I just want to thank you. Three minutes. No. <laughs> I just want to thank you again for this opportunity. Okay, don't rub it in. Okay. For, uh, uh, to participate in this discussion. I think it's just very refreshing. Um, to bookkeeping, you know, I really applaud uh, forming this, uh, the committee, the CCAC, and as the charter that was written by um, uh, Mr. Roderick, I think that um, I have no major issues with it. I think it's very sound in Resolution 1216. A couple of things. Size of the committee, I'm kind of concerned about that. Um, the, the town center committee had a total of eight people, as I recall. Uh, two of them were council people, council men, women, and I, I believe that the library committee also had a total of eight people, um, one council person and one staff. So, you know, I, my point is that I, I don't think that this committee should get any larger. Uh, I think the nine, as Councilman Carlson has, has, has mentioned, is a, an appropriate size, but to think that we need to load this up, I think it's going to cause you know, problems. And also, I think that the concept of this, um, the ad hoc committee, uh, w could work. You know, you have committees who are really interested in the environment, or a lead building, or the library per se, or the police station. We don't know, we don't have to have a core team that's so big that doesn't really care how many conference rooms we have in this facility to be participating in this. Um, it, it gets just unwieldy. So again, you know, let's let's think about the size of this in terms of workability, please. Um, make sure it works and the ad, ad hoc concept seems to be something that we can pursue. You know, the other item is the architect choosing the architectural term. And this is again back to the master plan. We need a master plan. But we also need the committee to direct the master plan. And and that goes to let's get the committee going. Can I speak to mm -hmm. something more? Okay. Okay, sorry. So, uh, so let's get the committee together so we can <coughs> to a company. Now, which company do you choose? You know, that's the question. Um, uh, you know, the town center architects and M and R. Uh, we haven't even asked them if they do master plans. They are familiar with the uh, program and the area. 
That's a plus for them, but can they do a good master plan? I don't think the library, uh, for no, no offense to them, that they're not even familiar with the entire program, you know. And what they could do is possibly add value if you're talking about adding them to a team. What we need from them only is what size is this library to plop this down on the master plan? And they don't know that. We don't know that anymore. What size is this library? Uh, so, you know, I'm not really comfortable with that scenario. Um, going out to another outside, there, there are a lot of firms, as Dee Dee said, who actually do this for a living, the uh, master plan. But it'll cost a little bit, maybe, <coughs> some time, effort. But we need a committee together to make these decisions, to start the search, and to get it going. So, thank you. Very nice. Uh, we have a comment from the back. Kathy Jans, 95 Wilburn Avenue. Um, first of all, I think the community does need a central hub. I, I think it ha will have tremendous impact on the sense of cohesiveness. And I think, secondly, that the library and the main buildings or the conference building should be done by, and I'm not an architect, by one group whoever it be, because I think you visually want to see an integrated project, whether it's separate components or whatever that they have, they meet together, that you're not seeing some eclectic building here, a design, say, a farmhouse up here, and a very <coughs> contemporary building there. And that would be um, obnoxious to the community. I think um, all efforts should be made to make the community involved, and that we should cross the lines of any kind of historical problems we've had. I, I think that uh, right now the president's talking and you know you have Democrats and Republicans sitting pretty much on different sides of the room but hopefully some of them apparently are sitting across the room. Um, I don't know what's happened since I turned off the radio. The project should reflect the aesthetics of the community and shouldn't be some architect's kind of monster such as the MA performing art uh, building. That's my perspective. You may have feel that people, I don't, and I think it looks terribly out of place. Um, and um, it, it could be contemporary or in a traditional sense. It doesn't have to be um, some kind of white, uh, um, whatever, square, rectangular mess. Um, and don't let HSR dictate the, the issues itself. Um, just be cognizant to that possible issue, but I would just not let it dictate you. I don't know if you know in New York City that um, Tudor City was built with no windows facing the East River because there was a pig farm there many years ago. And of course, that pig farm is long gone, and the United Nations is sitting there now. So just be really aware. Interesting. <laughs> Interesting. Is there anyone else who'd like to speak? Come on, if, if you're, oh, okay, you're being pointed now at, from your uh, friend in back of you, so I, I you've got to get up now. Curiosity question, uh, within the master plan parameters, is there any existing structure that can't be raised if we wanted to? For example, is this an historical building or anything like that? So, my, my, my understanding is that this is not on the historical register, um, but I would personally like to see it maintained uh, because it does have some historical significance. It's got you a have, plaque out there. Right? There's a plaque yeah, out there. Yeah. By the Heritage Association. Yeah, but it's not, not, by the state. It's, not yeah. it's not a national historic register no, building. No. no, I mean, I've looked it up, I've, no. I've researched that, but uh, it's it, it has historical significance in the facade and from the look and feel of what our town was founded and you know how we were founded and so my personal opinion that that's just one person uh, would like to see that translated into some of the other buildings only on a mo more modern uh, take this should this needs to be renovated you know um, but Nothing else has historical value. Right. No, no. Do you want to um, add to that at all? No. Nope. Okay. Not on that thought. Okay. <laughs> Anybody else want to say something about that? I went around one. Well, I, I, I would say I, I, I don't think that the master plan would include this building, but of course I'm only one opinion. But this building needs a lot of work, and uh, whether the money that we get for them for the 
the whole thing covers the changes to this building, which are necessary or not, is one of the questions. Okay. <coughs> so I'll bring it back to council, and let's see if we can kind of summarize and take some action here tonight and let everybody go home, okay? Can I make some yes. comments here? Yes. I, I feel that the, <laughs> feel that the uh, uh, council chamber ought to be part of the master plan. I think all, all, of, <coughs> all the buildings on, that, uh, on this site ought to be, uh, be part of that. Because, uh, again, where you locate meeting rooms and, and uses and functions of the, uh, that the residents of town want this center to provide uh, can be, uh, you know, probably several options. And that kind of goes back to my thought here um, in terms of the master plan it, it seems that one of the first things that uh, that need to be needs to be tackled is, is the size and functional use of, of that uh, needs to be served uh, and th yes there has been a lot of work done both by the li library committee and, and by the uh, town center <coughs> in um, assembling information on needs assessment and that type of thing. But I would think that that would be one of the early early um, goals is to try and uh, <coughs> zero in on, okay, what are the functional uses that we need to serve? And then there may be uh, get into the question of, of where best to serve that, whether it's in a li library facility or whether it's in a, uh, a facility that's near the uh, town staff or council chambers or, or whatever, and I agree with one of the speakers that uh, once you have an idea of the size and, and the functions, you, you, you probably have a dollar range and begin to test the reality. Is, is it really going to be, is the reality that, uh, there that we can raise the funds we need to raise in order to build the, the uh, facility? So that's kind of my thought process at this point. Any other council members want to? Make a um, okay, for me, uh, the process of selecting the committee and getting that process moving, you know, to me is important at this point. Um, the number of members, seven to nine, is probably the right category, in my opinion. Um, I would like to see just based on my experience with committees or projects that are large like this, we have a time frame set in here within a four year period. But I also am concerned that if we do not get the project done within that time frame, we would be losing committee members based on the time frames yeah. that we have created <coughs> within this. And if we have original committee members that want to make the longevity through this entire project, I think that there should be some consideration for that. And in the waking hours of the final development process, we don't kick them off the committee. So that to me, you know, is something that I think we should consider. Um, I think that as far as creating the master plan or selecting um, a firm to start us with that process, to me, I think that we could go move forward with trying to, you know, open up our our process to selecting a firm to help us with the master design plan while we're still moving forward with creating the committee, um, and maybe they can be involved in the final process and the or you know be informed as far as who is in our process for selection. Um, I think that, you know, clearly the buildings that we have here should be considered um, in the master plan process and alternative plans in the master plan gives us some direction of, you know, in choosing what we want in layout. And also in that is a considerable difference in cost or layout would, you know, be a big impact on how we can fund a project. Um, I think that it would be beneficial to us as a community to show progress in moving forward while we have the alternative, which is people that are willing to provide some funding for our 
long-term idea. And you know, I agree with the gentleman that mentioned it's difficult when we don't know what the project is, but we also need to uh, move forward so that the people that do want to contribute have an idea that we're not just going to do the same old thing and waste umpteen number of years, and at the end of the road, we have nothing. So I think that we kind of have to show as a town and as an effort and being responsible and moving forward and that this is just not going to be something that, you know, in four years we've wasted $500,000. And I wouldn't like to see that. No. So it's just my comments. Thank you. Any other? I have nothing else. Okay. Okay. Um, 